At SiriusXM Volume, don't forget to hit us up via social media on World Golf Day. Lori Majewski sat down with Roger O'Donnell. Of The Cure, keyboardist. Yeah, we spoke. Um, he was He's in England. I am here in New York. But because of Zoom, we came together and it sounded like this. On Volume. I'm zooming across the miles right now with Roger O'Donnell from The Cure. Hey, Roger. Hi, Laurie. Nice to see you. Nice to talk to you. It's nice to see you. Nice to talk to you. <laughs> well, this is your first Zoom. I've yes. de-virginized you with Zoom. I'm a massive Apple fan, so I keep asking people why they're using Zoom and not FaceTime. But I don't come up with, nobody comes up with a good answer. Well, I have, I'm an Apple person too, but this is what was foisted upon me. So. Well, there we are. Well, it looks very nice, I have to say. I'm in Woodstock, New York. and I you, love Woodstock. It's really special. It's springtime yeah. here, even if we are in lockdown. And you're at the coast of, of England? Uh, no, I'm sort of, well, I'm where England gets kind of thin and pointy to the west. I'm, I'm actually about half an hour from the coast. So it's very beautiful here, very. So. Well, I'm glad you found a nice place to to quarantine. Yeah. Um, have I was wondering, like, how we've been talking to people about how this whole COVID nineteen thing has affected them as musicians, and some artists are delaying the album releases, and you are actually you put out an album in the middle of this called Two Ravens, um, and it has been. For the last few weeks, anyway, the soundtrack to my quarantine, because it's an evocative, cinematic, emotional, beautiful record. Um, but of course, when you put this record out, I mean, when you made this record, it, we weren't in these, this situation. <laughs> no, uh, I was in some kind of self-enforced lockdown. I'd been on tour for a year in 2016 with The Cure. and. Of course, all that time longing to be at home and be on my own. Because uh, you, when you're on tour, you're surrounded by people. And obviously, not just the 20,000 people you look out from the stage from every night, but you're surrounded by crew and friends. And, and you're just thinking, oh, I just want to be at home. I just want to be on my own. And so the tour ended in early December. And I went home to my house and on my own. And suddenly, it's midwinter. I'm on my own after a year of being around people and I'm in total isolation and I'm like, ah, oh, it's a bit lonely, isn't it? And uh, of course, midwinter in England is quite harsh. It's very stark, you know, uh, gray, cold, rainy. And it was just the emotions that came out of me uh, being at home after all that time on tour. And being 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 actually in isolation, but self-imposed. So then, the, it is not a coincidence that I've spent the last few weeks, most of which have been cold and rainy, thinking <laughs> this is the perfect record because it was those are the exact conditions that you made it under. Yeah, I actually would really have preferred that it was released in the autumn, so so it's kind of capturing the same mood. But it's been perfect, and we the label said to me, um, do you want to delay it? Do you want to delay it until this is over? And I'm like, no, this is a perfect opportunity. People are desperate for entertainment. And, uh, well, I hope it's entertaining anyway. <laughs> but they're, they're desperate for something to listen to and, some, and, a, and the, an experience and hopefully an emotional experience. And it's like the music of the cure. It's, it, people say, oh, it's so sad. But if you're in that state of mind and you're listening to music that's written from that same emotional standpoint it just makes you feel like you're not alone so you know the last thing you want to do right now is listen to well i never listen to happy music anyway but i think you just want to feel like somebody else understands what you're going through it's cathartic it absolutely is and it's dreamlike i feel like i'm in between days <laughs> so the fact that your album i can't tell what's night and what's day Oh, I'm just kind of floating between, yeah. that's why it, it's the perfect soundtrack right now. I woke up, uh, well, actually, I'm now calling Everyday Monday, which somebody told me is a Smith song, which 
or a Morrissey song. Every day is like Fine. Sunday, Roger. Oh, whatever. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but every every day just feels like Monday, and I'm so. Uh, on Sunday morning, I woke up and I really had no clue what day it was. I mean, my life doesn't revolve around the days of the week in general because I don't, you know, I live a different kind of lifestyle. But now there really is no change. How does a member of The Cure celebrate World Goth Day? Well, you know, we've spent our whole career denying that we're goth. So I shall spend the whole of goth, International Goth Day saying, well, I'm not a goth. <laughs> Let it be noted he is wearing black. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Monday. I always wear black. <laughs> Roger, I have to say, uh, this weekend I was supposed to be at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction uh, ceremony in yeah. Cleveland. I was going to be seeing Depeche Mode go in. Um, you know, after you were inducted last year, you were given something very special, which is the right to vote for future. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So did you vote for Depeche Mode? Uh, well, I would have if my voting paper had arrived. In what? fact, none of us, no, no members of The Cure received their, and we're a little upset about it. What? So I and, and Depeche still got about. in without 11 members <laughs> of The Cure voting for them? Well, I think some of the other uh, some of the other members got their uh, ex members got theirs, but none of the current members got their uh, polling card. So I'm going to have to uh, invoke um, Trump and say, "Look, it's f it's fake." <laughs> <laughs> but I for sure would have voted for Depeche because they are very good friends of ours and. I've known Martin uh, um, primarily for, what, 25 years? Um, and, you know, we always, if we're ever anywhere close, we always hang out and uh, always go and see them. Uh, we, I think I saw them twice on the last tour. So, I mean, they, they deserve to be in. I'm not sure that they're, they're even less rock and roll than we are. Oh, wait a minute, though. They became rock and roll, didn't they? Yes, when they, they decided did. to uh, take over America. And, and they got a drummer. Yeah. Martin started playing lead guitar. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. They're probably more rock than we are. And of the other inductees, T-Rex, definitely. Kraftwerk, undoubtedly would have voted for them. But you know Kraftwerk didn't get in, right? Did they what? They did not get in. Oh, uh, why not? Because the cure play. didn't get their votes in. I think that's yeah. why. Oh, well, you can be assured that we would have all voted for Kraftwerk. Now you have a legitimate gripe. Depeche got in, T Rex got in. But what if the cure's yeah. votes would have taken Kraftwerk over the top? Well, that's. Uh, I'm going to insist that we get two votes next year each. All right. And I'm Is sure Kraftwerk will be up again. And then you could each, that could help. Who else got in this year then? Um, the Doobie Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> I love the Doobie Brothers. <laughs> in fact, where's that? Uh, I just got one of their albums here. It's here somewhere. Oh, here it is. Look. Two Ravens by the Doobie <laughs> Brothers. <laughs> here, hold on. Class of Twitter. Because, of course, I can't believe that I'm, I'm forgetting for a second. The Doobie Brothers, um, Depeche Mode, T-Rex, Nine Inch Nails. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whitney Would Houston. It... Oh, Whitney, yeah. And the Notorious B.I.G. Okay, well, I was definitely voted for uh, Nin. Because Trent's a, you know, he's a good guy. He's a stand-up guy, right? Yeah, he inducted he you guys. Us. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he inducted us. That was nice. Um, so, yeah, it's not a bad, you know, they've pandered to different markets as well, haven't they? Yes. No, it, it was, I, I think it would have been a great thing. It's supposed to be, it's rescheduled for November. So we shall see <clears throat> if, if, if it goes off, because we're talking about not having concerts until fall of 2021 right now. Yeah, I think that we're going to be the last... Um, industry to which is rough for a lot of people especially the you know the kind of um ancillary 
kind of people like the road crew and uh, gear and venues and everything they're having a rough time so uh yeah it's going to be a long time before yeah i mean you can't really have social distancing at a concert can you well, be. no, but I don't know if you heard yesterday, the mayor, the governor of Missouri, one of our states here in America, basically said starting today, concerts are okay in his state. Yeah, but who's going to go? I just saw something awful about the, you know, that the death rate in the US is going <laughs> to double, you know, the, uh, I think hopefully common sense is going to, I can't see who would, what bands would tour anyway. Would they? I mean, you get, it would just be, an, especially our age group, because we're in the firing line. <laughs> you know, we're not spring chickens anymore, are we? So That's a good uh, point. Luckily, we've completed, a, uh, I don't know, was it 50 shows last year? Um, because if that had happened this year, it would have, we did like, 35 or I can't remember festival shows last year and it was amazing and uh, of course this year nothing would happen I've got Rock and Roll Hall of Famer class of 2019 with me today the curious Roger O'Donnell I'm Laurie Majewski and Roger's released a gorgeous new record it's called Two Ravens hey we mentioned World Goth Day before that's a perfect title for World Goth Day uh, yeah but I'm not a goth that's right. That's right. You see, you keep getting <laughs> <laughs> World Goth Day, which is on uh, May twenty second. Um, I, I Dave Vanian is a goth from from the Damned, and do you know he keeps ravens? Does he? Yes, he told me that he's a raven. He's a raven keeper. He he owns ravens. So um, Dave was, of course, a punk. Yes. The Damned were a punk band. So when did he make that progression to, to goth? goth? Yeah. He's, you know, he professes that he is a vampire, so he has always <laughs> lived. It's true. <laughs> so he's not a goth. He's certifiably insane. <laughs> or amazing. <laughs> um, but you know, Roger, the Damned became goths on that, really? on that yeah, on the... Um, in the mid 80s they put oh. out that record phantasmagoria with that goth girl on the cover that she went on to marry nick cave uh so he's always been a goth i think that he made the damned become goths oh singers do that you know they do they do yeah. so you know we were mentioning before that the cure hadn't yet announced any 2020 tour dates and um I'm assuming you were thinking about it because Robert has been talking about the fact that this year you will be releasing, The Cure will be releasing a new record. And he mentioned that back in February at the Enemy Awards. I wonder, is that still something that could happen? You know what? Uh, honestly, I have no idea. So I can't even, I wouldn't even take a guess on it. I don't uh, want I you wouldn't... to say anything that gets you in trouble. <laughs> I always get in trouble. <laughs> but I do know, I mean, back in February when Robert attended the Enemy Awards, he said, all that's left to do is to mix the record. And he said, I promise, promise that this will happen before the end of 2020. Because if you remember, he said it would be out Halloween 20, 2019. Then he said, by the holidays, Christmas 20, 2019. Then now he's promising this year. But I don't know if we give him an out now because... He yeah. said that before the pandemic. You sound like that you believe things that Robert says. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it's been it was, a long yeah. time since we've had this Cure record. And it, I have to tell is. you that he has teased us. He said that this record is one of the darkest records the Cure has ever made and that mm. he likens it to pornography. It's an immense record. I think I've told you this before. It is, it is what everybody and what we've been waiting to make. So it is the Cure record that everybody wants. Nobody will be disappointed. So why it hold just, on to it and not share it? Well, because things take time. Everything happens in the fullness of time, doesn't it? I started, I wrote, started writing my album 
in December 16. So that's two four, reigns. Three and a half years. So wow. Things take time, you know, and the better things take longer. So, it, it, but I'm sure it'll be out the moment it's ready. There we are. Well, let's play something now from Two Ravens, uh, The Haunt. Uh, I've been, you know, it's interesting to pull out a specific track because Roger, I have been playing this album front to back and I feel as though I don't even know where some of the tracks and, and new ones begin because in my experience of this record, it's about an album in its entirety. I wonder when you made the record, if that's how you thought of it, or did you think of them in terms of individual tracks? Well, so one of the tracks was written early on, but then when I sat down and, start, and then started to play and started to compose, once you have one or two, then you kind of draw down this path that leads you to the others. I mean, it's, it's kind of the way that I write music in general. It's just, it seems obvious to me when I play one part of it, all the other parts seem obvious. And then I think with an album, putting together a collection of songs, you gradually pull these songs in that make sense with the others. Uh, and I think that's one of the saddest things today about people not listening to albums in their entirety. Because uh, for me, growing up with vinyl, it was that, that journey through the, through the piece and the way that the, the musicians had decided which song follows the other and which to start side B. And that, I think that's a really interesting part. And like you said, each song isn't an individual thing. It's part of the whole. But in these days, digital releases, people just pick out songs that they like, don't they? I mean, you can't stop them. Um, but it is coming. It will be released as final, and it's <clears throat> it's a very obvious break where one side ends and where the next side begins. Very old school of you. <laughs> well, I am very old school. <laughs> <laughs> what can you tell us about the haunt? Um, I wrote it. Um, I wanted to. Um, my daughter's French, and she's an artist as well. She's a graphic designer. And we were talking about, she was illustrating some French folk songs, folk stories. <clears throat> and I thought it might be nice to um, set one to music. So I just chose one. And I was trying to kind of invoke that kind of folky kind of feel in the, in the piano and the strings. And then when I sent it to Jen, uh, Jennifer Pagg, who sang on the album, she came out with this quite dark um, idea of haunting somebody if they've left you like in a relationship that you would come back and 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 haunt them which sounds like a great idea to me even though i'm not a goth so <laughs> it kind of took on a dark turn so i was quite happy with that Roger, one of the things I keep reading is that hopefully this pandemic is going to lead to changes in our society, like whether it's, you know, the environment, is our earth taking a breath right now because we're not all commuting um, and polluting everything, but even just changes at, in terms of learning how to relate to other human beings. I mean, most of the time, everyone's been on their phone walking down the street, not even looking up anymore. Yeah. Do you feel like that? Do you feel like, are we able to change? Um, I hate to be pessimistic, but I think, I don't think anything's gonna change, sadly. I think we'll just rush back to doing everything that we've always wanted to do. And it should be a wake up because you know, look at the um, Los Angeles had the, the cleanest air of any city in the world about three weeks ago. We should be doing things differently, but we won't. Uh, it's not in. It's not in human. It's not human nature. I think we'll want. We'll, we're desperate things for things to be the same as they were before this all started, and I think we'll rush straight back into it. And I think it's sad, but I think that's human nature. 
Um, is this something like, do you feel like the members of The Cure, like, do you feel like as a collective, this is affecting you guys at all? I don't know if you're on like a group text. I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> I could just imagine <laughs> Robert Smith emoji. But, <laughs> but like, are, are, is, are you talking about how, is this affecting the, mu the music or the group at all? Uh, no, we live quite separate lives. I mean, I think we've, I've spoken to Jason. Uh, I speak probably the most, uh, I'll text Reeves probably every couple of days and we chat about things. We're talking about doing some kind of, trying to do some kind of online music thing. Um, but we don't really, we're, we're much less well, in, in some senses, we're much closer than we ever were. But in terms of our lives, we live much more separate lives than we used to. Maybe 20 years ago, we would live, you know, we would spend a lot of time together. But now we spend, we, we, we live much uh, more individual lives. And I think everybody, uh, Simon posted something on Facebook the other day that he's like, he can't believe, he's, he, can't, he couldn't believe he was saying this, but he misses being on tour. So... I think we'll all be desperate to get that out there and play when it when we get a chance. But yeah, yeah. I mean, imagine what it's going to be like. It's like all these yeah. pent up feelings. Yeah. People, once we're able to be together again, yeah, I think gonna we're going to appreciate it, right? Yeah, but good luck getting a venue. I mean, every band in the world is going to be out on tour, aren't they? Immediately. In fact, I was thinking I should book a few venues. <laughs> He's an interesting character, Roger O'Donnell on Volume Series X and 106. You guys are basically like, um, like, like, you know, I would say pen pals, but you're like buddy buddies now, right? We've become closer. Um, when he first came to feedback, I wasn't sure if he liked me or not. Dude, <laughs> and then I I realized... wel welcome to my world. <laughs> welcome to my world. I was like, is this guy goofing on me because he likes me or because he thinks I'm a sod? I don't know. <laughs> no, but I think that's just his English sense of humor. Right.